Hello crafties, welcome to this video. If you are returning, welcome back. And if you're brand new to the channel, welcome. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you do, don't forget to subscribe. So, I mentioned a few months ago when I got the machine, once I felt like I was pretty good with it, I would do a series of videos because they're like non-existent for this, like, there's a couple for this machine but there aren't a whole lot of them. So there's just some things. So I'm going to imagine, you know, that you guys are just now taking this thing out of the box. We're not quite ready for the yarn yet, so I'm gonna just ravel it out of our way. Centro. <laughs> it has two settings, tube knitting and panel knitting. Now, I'm gonna let you guys know right now, tube knitting on this machine will be the easiest thing in the world. Panel knitting, on the other hand, is kind of a pain, but we'll go over that in another video. Today we're going to focus on tube knitting. So you got your machine all put together. You noticed already that they gave you three different um, darning needles, which is cool. My favorite one, I think, is this one, the medium-sized one. But you're more than welcome to use whichever one you prefer. They also gave you this little crochet hook for picking up stitches. It's okay. I like to, I always end up grabbing like a regular aluminum crochet hook. But this one's okay too if you're just strictly like knitting, you're not a crocheter. So, putting those aside, this is an example of something that you could make with this machine. So I have been, well I started out charning out hats and since this is after my portfolio review when this video is posting, I plan on doing a lot more this season. My only thing is with this machine is that like when I unroll it, I like to go around it with crochet and an extra darning needle and fix any mistakes around the edge because your tension is a lot looser down here. So this is one of those hats that I haven't quite gotten to yet, but I'm gonna put it to the side. I've also made a big, really big scarf so far with this machine. It, um, it was, was it 394 rows? 294 rows? It was somewhere in there. It's super long, super big. It's my scarf because it's huge. So, anywho, I'm gonna get started. So, first of all, when you um, want to thread your machine, I recommend using like a Red Heart yarn or a Karen Simply Soft. They work best with this machine. This is Red Heart Colorscapes, and the instructions for the machine actually tell you to use about 12 inches, which, depending on what you're doing, you're going to want to, but for the sake of this video, I will use the 12 or so inches. I'm eyeballing it. They'll tell you to just loosely wrap your yarn around this white hook, make sure it's in the upward position. I like to do a slip knot because I'm paranoid and I don't want my string pulling and pulling. So I'm putting my slip knot over this white hook and so what I'm going to do now is actually thread the machine and you're supposed to alternate threading the yarn forward and backward of these hooks. So because I put my yarn on this first hook in this manner technically this is in the front so as I turn my crank away from me I'm going to go back and then forward and then back and then forward and back and then forward. And you want to do this very slowly making sure you don't drop anything. You also want to make sure your yarn isn't too thick for the machine otherwise you're going to end up with dropped stitches which is super annoying. Once you get good at it, you can actually pick up some speed with it. Alright, and so I've come up to the end. My white needle is coming back up, and I'm just going to make sure it catches my yarn. And now, what I'm going to do is simply put my yarn in the threader. And there's this little tension thing down here. I like using the middle one 
for most of my yarn. Now the thicker your yarn is, um, you're going to want to use probably this one or you can use these two. So I find myself sometimes using the two bottom holes on this tension thing just for that tighter tension that I adore. But you're going to notice when you thread the machine, you see how it looks like the yarn is threaded in groups of twos. That's what you want. What you want to do is just slowly start cranking your handle away from yourself. And you want to do this slowly for the first few rows just to make sure that you're getting all of your stitches. Now if you notice some extra pulling and stuff and you notice this tension thing pulling upward, you can always loosen your tension by taking it out of one of the holes. I have less sticking here. I'm going to keep cranking. And now that my machine is like free flowing and it's not catching, I can kind of pick up my speed. But again, if you're just starting out, you want to go as slow as possible. For those first three to four rows, the instruction says, but who listens to those? And I'm actually really happy that this yarn uh, works out well with this machine. Because this yarn um, being used for a commission, again, it is Colorscapes. Let me look at the color because I don't remember. It is Acapulco? Acapulco. I'll link it in the description. I can't pronounce that. <laughs> but yeah, so the person was like, rainbows, and I'm like, ah, ah, what about this guy? So, she's happy with it. I'm happy with it. So I'm just going to keep cranking and keep cranking. And I'll come back when I have of hat. Alright, we're gonna, I hope that's good, I hope that's good, so I'm gonna actually scoot up, I'm gonna scoot up, and I'm gonna talk anything, two, one, okay crafties, so I have cranked as many rows as I possibly could have at that moment, and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unthread my machine and before I move on I am going to crank my handle because I have this white needle right here and in order to cast off I'm going to catch I'm going to pull this out of the threader I'm going to catch my yarn under there and I'm going to hold up my working yarn vertically and just crank a full row without without any yarn see it coming back around pretty quick so now what I'm going to do actually the instructions for the machine tell you to cut off about mm, about 12 inches of yarn I do that more or less or at least enough to go around the circumference of the machine so you know that's about 12 inches just about more or less and I do that just so I can have enough to sew together my project and that's the same idea for starting off with 12 inches so now that I've round, roughly rounded that around the machine I'm just gonna snip that yarn off and 
I'm going to start casting off my machine. So in order to do that, what I want to do without <laughs> roughly pulling my stitches off of my needle, I'm going to thread this guy through. If he wants to cooperate, I'm going to thread him through like that. And I feel safe enough to crank my machine. So this first stitch that's being slided off of this white hook, that's already that's okay to like have that fall off but these ones going around you do not want those falling off because otherwise you're going to be using that crochet hook and you're going to be trying to pick up drop stitches so before I start cranking I always like to thread my yarn through these loops like through so many of these loops and so when I start cranking I don't have to worry about losing my stitches Just do one more and crank it around. So a few tips with using this machine. Um, you obviously want to make sure that it's uh, sitting in a spot that's comfortable for you to work on because otherwise your elbow and your whole arm is going to get tired. It also helps to kind of sort of lightly lean over this machine. It's kind of like when you're doing pottery on a potter's wheel. You want to put your whole body into it. But not in a way that would like break your machine, you know. And you can either do whip stitch or you can like go back and forth like the instructions say. I find I found that just doing it this way, coming from the same direction, has been much simpler and much easier to do. But you can do whatever method is comfortable for you. I'm just going to crank this around. And as you can see, my stitches are coming off nicely. And this also, doing this method makes it easy to cinch this thing closed. Because, again, I'm making a hat. Now, if you're making a scarf, you still want to do this very loosely. But you're probably going to want to do more tail than I did for a scarf. So that you can both cast off and so you can sew that in together. And the same for the... Um, and that's actually down in the machine. Oh my gosh, I keep losing my yarn. So this yarn is very soft. I see why it threads through the machine so easily. I was not expecting that. Because there was another red heart. I think it was the With Love yarn. It didn't like this machine very much at all. So... You have to watch for that too. Make sure your yarn is smooth enough and thin enough to go through the machine. Now, if you have yarn that's too thin, you can always wrap your yarn around all three um, of these little rings in this tension tensioner, tension, tension thing. So yeah. So making a hat with this machine, or really any circular knitting machine, is pretty easy. And just so you guys know, this series won't be very long at all. I just wanted to do a couple of beginner videos that kind of help you guys out. Because when I was actually going through and trying to figure out this machine, I'm like, what in the world? And trying to do things based off, like, the Addy machine. I don't know. I'm one of those person that, persons, one of those people who likes exact references. So, you know, there was this, um, there's this one YouTuber that uses this machine but she's like the only one and all the other references I did or, or had were based off the Addy machine or the Michaels machine and it's just like, no, every machine is unique. Like similar, but unique. Like technically this Centro machine has, is it two? Two or four more needles than the Addy Express. So, you know, things vary. Things vary. I am almost at the end of this. Almost there. Can you guys see that? 
I sure hope so. <laughs> Now, I want to make mention to this row counter. Be careful that you're not pressing this button while you're cranking because otherwise you're going to lose your count. And I did, in fact, lose my count. So I'd have to manually go through and count these rows to know how many I did. But this machine comes in handy, I'm telling you. Like if you have a lot of orders or you're doing a charity drive, you can crank out hats and scarves in like no time and then like you can direct your attention to other things like gloves or mittens even though I've seen I've seen things um, where apparently you can make gloves or mittens on this machine but I wouldn't want to I would want to just hand make them but that's just me almost to the end guys I can like count the stitches on one hand there's one two three four five six seven stitches and I noticed that my first stitch didn't quite come off of the machine earlier so I'll be just pulling that off of there because it's already cast on or cast off so if you guys have any additional questions feel free to ask me down in the comments below I'll also be linking uh, the machine that I have in the description below in case you want to check this out for yourself. I think they're handy. I really think they're handy. And um, the date of this video, you know, post, I'm actually done with my portfolio stuff. So I actually have time. I have time. So you guys are like, oh my god, Infinity, that's a headband. <laughs> Okay, so this guy right here, he's looking like a headband. <laughs> and actually when I unroll it, it's not that bad. So what I'm going to do is do a thick um, brim around the end, around the bottom of this in crochet. So I'm going to cut this off and I'm going to do that. And I will show you guys my finished product at the end of the video. I hope that today's video was helpful. If so, go ahead, leave me a thumbs up. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions, concerns, or you just want to comment. That's cool too. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on awesome weekly content. I post all sorts of things between art, crochet, and knitting throughout the week. So just, just you know, hang in there with me. And until next time, guys, happy making.